Mary Ellen Mendel, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Thank We're going you. to be talking about how um, you're keeping people informed and services, social services delivered to people. But tell me first, did, how is the remote work going? Is that a, did you have to work out some kinks? No, actually, um, you know, we practice this and drill and exercise with Department of Health and Emergency Management all through the year. Not quite with this scenario, but um, so we're, we've got a continuity of operations plan. Everybody's working from home. They, we all have laptops. Uh, some folks brought their little cube uh, headphones, headsets home, uh, two monitors. So we're, we're just, we've done this before during bad snowstorms um, or bad flooding. So it's kind of nice to not have any kinks. <laughs> how, how big is the network of people that you're working with directly? Uh, in inside two one one, yeah, uh, yep. For so for two one one, we've got um, five full time staff working uh, from eight a.m. till midnight answering calls. Um, we have three full time staff who are really um, our information getters, and they're going out and and updating our our database on the services and programs that we have in there because a lot of things are changing. This is evolving very quickly, as you know. Um, and we're trying to keep up with at least the service providers in our database. Um, and then we're also keeping track of some other um, more community grassrootsy type things that are going on, but that's a lot more challenging to keep up with. Um, our call volumes increased. We're doing anywhere from two to 300 calls a day. That's, that's pretty high for us. It's usually around 100. So it's at least two to three times higher. Um, but you know, uh, we use this Slack program. I don't know if you're familiar with it. So we're all talking to each other and we're having, trying to have some fun and, and be light. Uh, but yes, we are, um, there's many, many demands on our, on our time and our service. Do you have a water cooler channel on your Slack setup? It's not called water cooler. We just, we do, but we do have a, a, a place where we can go for just random conversation and um, along with all the other, you know, a COVID-19, a contact center, we've got a bunch of them. So, but it's fun. Yeah, we found Slack to be quite efficient. It it's, is. Yeah, and it tracks the conversations so you know, you can, you can keep, keep it sorted out. Exactly. And it's fun. I mean, people are having fun with it, you know, so that's good. So how does this compare with Irene? What kind of questions are you getting from folks? Um, we're, we're getting questions um, mostly right now about testing, but it's been all, all around. I mean, we've gotten questions about wearing a mask. We've got questions about, um, how, uh, I make granola. How do I know if it's safe to, to sell to people? How do, I let, how do I ensure them it's safe? If we go into the grocery store, what should we be doing? Should we wearing gloves and using cloth bags or paper bags? You know, so there, there's a lot of questions. And then of course, the questions that we feel like we can answer, which are the ones that are vetted uh, through the Department of Health. So we're getting a lot of calls around who can be tested. I wanna be tested. Why can't I be tested? Where can I be tested? So a lot of testing calls. Um, and we're gonna see this uh, you know, surge up as, as things go on. And so on the, today's the 23rd of March, I believe it's, I kind of lose time when you're working seven, seven days a week. That's correct. Um, but what is the, what is the advice that you're giving to folks on testing? What's the current status? Well, the current status is, you know, it's just, it's funny because every day feels like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? You get up, you sit in front of your laptop. <laughs> Can you do this all over again? Um, for testing, not everybody's going to be tested and you can't be tested unless you have some sort of symptom of the virus. And then if that's the case, you need to call your primary care physician. If you don't have a primary care physician, you can call 211 and we can um, recommend one of the local clinics. Um, or you can also get in touch with your insurance company if, if you're insured. And they sometimes have a, a portal with doctors who are accepting patients. So um, you can't get tested unless you have a referral from a doctor. And, and that's how we're, um, you know, that's how we're, how we're encouraging people or not encouraging people. That's how we're um, letting people know how they can go ahead and, and uh, find out more. And it's basically has to be through your primary care provider. Now, 211 is a statewide service. So you're fielding is, calls from all over. We are fielding calls from all over the state around COVID-19. We're also, because um, 
we have some vulnerable vulnerable adults and and children uh, in our in our state. We're also um, doing a lot of housing, emergency housing. Uh, it's been uh, the state has uh, developed some guidance on folks who might be what they call hyper vulnerable. So if they're over the age of 60, certainly if they're experiencing homelessness, uh, and where we were housing a couple weeks ago, we were asked to take people, people came out of shelters and went into motels um, who might have been hyper vulnerable. Um, and now we're just seeing um, a real relaxation on rules for emergency housing and we're housing a lot of people statewide. So I, I, as you may know, when the weather gets cold, um, the state advises of an adverse weather condition, and that relaxes some of the rules for, emer for obtaining emergency housing. This is even more relaxed than that. So um, trying to get people you know, housed and safe. So just talk about how that works from 211's perspective. People contact you, or who are you working with? Just how, what's that workflow? No, we have the, well, certainly this is a program of the state of Vermont, the um, Economic Benefits Services, uh, Economic Services Division, I'm sorry. And we take on those calls after hours for economic services. So at 4.30 every day, uh, people call us and are looking for temporary housing, usually in a motel. At this point, we're not even referring to shelters because we don't want to put new people in shelters when they're trying to so social distance and keep that 15 day period. Um, but folks call 211 if they're eligible and they're eligible in a, a few different ways. Uh, it could be that they're vulnerable, uh, catastrophic eligibility if their house burnt down, for an example, if they lost a family member recently, for an example. Um, and then there's a point system that we use too to make to see if people fit into that category. And then we could provisionally house them for a night up to one night up to four. If it happens, somebody calls on a Friday night, we're going to house them Friday, Saturday, Sunday until they can get to the office on Monday. And now there is no office, <laughs> at least it's not staffed. So people are having to call, do all this by phone now and call the Benefit Services Center um, for housing during the day. But when it's uh, after 4.30 and on weekends and holidays, 211 is taking that on and has been for many years. Um, so we'll get a, a hotel room for somebody, we'll call the hotel, we'll get the reservation, we'll get back to the person, let them know where they're going to be staying, how long they're going to be staying, and then they do need to go into economic services in the next business day, of course, in this case, they'll be calling. And then there's a little bit of a, a twist on that when the weather drops below 20 degrees or 32 with a 50% chance of precipitation in some places tonight. Um, then they would be able to, it's called adverse weather conditions, and we would be able to house them uh, for as long as the duration of the, the storm or the weather event. So you're talking about some of relaxation of uh, criteria and also how to get things done. Yeah. And, um, and so my main question is, do you see a longer term change? Do you, do you, does this kind of make you think that things might be working differently? After things working, this yeah, period. things are definitely working. I hope we see some change. I think there's some really neat, you know, uh, communication going on. People uh, are are really, uh, at least my experience has been, they're communicating really well with each other, doing a lot of follow up. I mean, everybody is pulled in different directions, but we're all in this together, as you've probably heard the governor say many times. Um, we're all in this together, and uh, I, I feel like there might be some changes in uh, systems after this is done, um, but it's hard to say exactly what that would be. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I imagine you've been, you've had systems in place. It sounds like you had the continuity of operations ready to go, so that was thought through. So you weren't inventing like a lot of organizations were last week yeah. how to do business. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and that's the thing, that's the key. You have to practice this this stuff. It just doesn't come naturally to everybody. Um, and I, again, we've just, this is what we do. We've been doing this for a long time now. Some of the things that we're noticing, um, you know, uh, as far as our data goes, is, is again, we're seeing a big increase in the housing, but we're also seeing an increase in people looking for food resources. Um, you know, with schools closed, 
<clears throat> I believe there's some, some communities that are trying to get together and make sure that those meals are getting out to students uh, while they're not in school, uh, but we're seeing a big increase in people looking for food resources. So, you know, will something come out of that? Uh, hopefully there'll be some sort of a contingency plan if this happens again at schools so that the food can get out to the community because it is their responsibility to continue to feed the children. And what are you, you, you mentioned there are some communities coming up with the solutions on the fly. Are there any in particular, where do you refer people? Well, we're not referring people to communities <laughs> and some of the grassroots uh, stuff. We're trying to keep track of it, but it's very, very difficult to keep track of that and, and keep our database up to date. So we're, we focused as a priority on getting the uh, COVID, updated COVID-19 frequently asked questions from the Department of Health so we can field these calls and also updating the resources in our database. I don't have any examples to give to you right now. There's, there's many of them that are going around in the community. Um, I know Lamoille, I guess I do have an example. Lamoille County, for example, is, has a team of people who are volunteering to run errands and pick things up for people and, you know, drop things off prescriptions or food. And, um, and that's all, you know, they wanted to use 211 for that to call, but I felt like that could get really dropped, you know, lost in the shuffle. Um, but they're doing that. They're, the Lamoille County community has got a team of volunteers reaching out to people. That's just one example of many that are going on in the, in the state, around the state. So how does this compare with Hurricane Irene? It's a lot. Um, a lot of the. It's a lot the same in the sense that it's rush, 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 kind of high anxiety in some circumstances. A lot of debriefing, a lot of phone conference calls with emergency management and Department of Health and others. But it's not. The volume has not quite hit what it did with Irene. We received one day in uh, during Irene, uh, post Irene, in one day we had nine thousand calls. Uh, we've never seen that before, and I hope we don't see it again. Uh, but that's, you know, Irene, it was different because when it's flooding, obviously nobody goes anywhere. If it's just a snowstorm, people, some, most people stay home. Uh, but this is so like nothing we've ever really had to do before, right? Um, they call it social distancing, but it's more like physical distancing, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's one thing for us to do this and I love it. I think it's great. Our technology has really, you know, enabled us to, to have these conversations and to see other people and talk to other people. But um, we really, we, we're, a lot of us need that physical too, you know, to be uh, close to people. So in that case, I think it's the same as Irene because people were definitely distanced from uh, each other and their communities. And in some cases, the rest of the state. Volume's not as high yet. Um, information flow is just as challenging. It's coming from everywhere. Um, so it's important that we vet everything that we give out to the public. So I imagine you're working a lot, hours yeah. every day. Yes. Have you had any downtime? I, I made myself yesterday at three o'clock. I shut off the computer and the cell phone and I, I just stayed off of it for a few hours. I haven't had that much, but uh, I'm trying. It's starting, to, it's starting to get to me. So I'm, uh, I also, by the end of the day, <laughs> Looking at this computer, I get a wicked headache, so I have to now start shutting myself off. Yeah, I don't blame you. You know, they have those glasses you can use. I have the blue filter. Oh, I, I, I had a concussion a couple of years ago, and, mm -hmm. and it rears its ugly head uh, in times like this when I'm too focused on the screen and doing a lot of talking, too. That usually does it, too, but I'm getting there. I can there, imagine. You know, I can it's imagine. Making me just, yeah, it's just making me take a little bit of a break, so... Well, Everybody thank you. Is there anything you think folks, you'd like folks to know about 211 and your services? Well, you know, I want folks to know that we're there. We are 24-7, 365. We're back. We lost that for a little while, but we are back. And um, it is a very busy time. We are fielding calls for the whole state in very different uh, areas, whether it be housing or food resources or COVID information please just leave a message if you don't get through to a, uh, a person and uh, we will make sure to call you back. Well, Mary I think that's the biggest thing. Mary Ellen, you are on the front line of the United Way service delivery, which is a huge social safety net for our state. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. And thank you so much for this update. And if you feel at any point you want to provide some other update, just let us know. I will do that, and you reach out too. Thank you so much for doing this, Lauren Glenn. I really appreciate it. It's great to see you. You too. Hang in there.